Thanks to DJI for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, Beanbag Scientist here. You know, as an American, I'm proud of my constitutional rights. Freedom of speech. The gun one, the other ones, but mostly the gun one. George Washington fought for my right to own a laser death ray, right? I'm sorry, but that model is only available to the military or the US <laughs> government. Uh, yeah, like the kind that can shoot down planes and missiles. You said you're a YouTuber? Hello? Get it together, Raytheon. If you can't sell me a Ford F-350 with a 50 kilowatt laser attachment, I'm gonna have to take my business elsewhere. To Ricky in China. He sells lasers. All right, guys, here it is. The laser has arrived. Now, if you've ever wanted to see an unboxing on a $1,500 laser, well, you're in luck because here it is. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, here we go. Let's see what this looks like. Here it is, my baby, my laser. A 200 watt laser, that is insane. That that much laser power can come out of this little fiber. So this laser is terrifying for two reasons. Number one, all of the energy comes through this little tiny glass fiber. This fiber is only 100 micrometers in diameter. That's like the size of a human hair. Another reason that's terrifying is because the laser is invisible. So as a Styropyro would say, this laser could vaporize your retinas without you even knowing it. So here's the end of the fiber laser right here, this little thing. And if we use this little USB microscope, we can actually see the fiber where the laser light comes out of. It's kind of hard to see, but that little fiber at the end of the tip is what outputs all of that laser power. So the end face of the fiber has to be perfectly cleaved and basically totally dust free, nothing on it. Because when you turn on the laser, it's so much power in a little spot that even if there's one speck of dust on the end of that fiber, it'll immediately catch on fire and the whole fiber will start to burn backwards from the laser power. So it's super important that we keep the end of this fiber clean and covered until it's time to use it. So speaking of time to use it, I think that we do a little test. All right, so this is the first high power test of this laser diode. I'm scared, dude. Even though the, these say that they're rated, I'm still scared of these. Like, I... I don't trust them. Anyway, I wouldn't trust any random glasses that you get on Amazon. So we have this camera that can see infrared really good, really sensitive to infrared. So what we are going to do is aim the camera through the glasses and look at the laser through this and see if we can see any infrared light. All right. Are you ready, Steven? Yep. Turning it on. It's on. Is it on? Wow, okay. So, I mean, the glasses are safe. They're definitely safe. Now we're gonna try a piece of wood. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Holy f Wow. It it's good. Wow, it, deep, it went pretty deep into there too. That's like, dude, that was on for two seconds. That was on for two, less than two seconds. And it's five, it's a half centimeter deep. That's pretty crazy. I want to see what it does to this rock. Is it on me? Yeah. yeah. Man, I look cool on these glasses, huh? So sleek. Okay, now we're going to see what ha- I look like such a dweeb in these glasses. Here we go. We're going to see what happens to a rock. Three, two, one. What the heck? It burned a rock! Holy crap! It burned a rock! That's wild. That's probably not healthy. You probably shouldn't vaporize random minerals with a, with a laser. Could be bad. Are you ready? This is a rock. Three, two, one. Wow, that stuff flying off of it was wild. It burns a rock! I'm gonna slide the wood in. I'm still scared. Whoa. Wow. Off. Dude, it just like cut through the wood. It cut through that whole corner in that fast. Okay, Steven is setting up our next test, which is going to be a penny. This is a zinc penny. And then we're gonna try a copper penny. Three, two, one, go. We're burning a penny, dude, we're burning a penny. What the heck? Focus. We melted 
This laser just melted a zinc penny. That is pretty nuts. All right, let's try a copper penny. Three, two, one, go. 12.5 amps. The penny is burning. The penny is burning. All right, you can turn it off. Oh, holy crap. Ah, the penny's red hot. Holy crap. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Whoa. That's insane. That was incredible. Steven, very cool laser. I like burning stuff up close, but you know what would be better? Burning stuff far away. Yeah. All right, I know you guys just want to see a giant laser burn thing, so I'm definitely not going to tell you about this old satellite dish mount from an RV that I converted into a giant laser aimer, or how I interfaced this old controller through an Arduino and tons of our... Actually, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you about all the Arduino code. And I'm definitely not gonna tell you guys about this awesome laser enclosure that I made. It's got a 9.25 inch Cassegrain reflector style telescope that we're going to be using to focus the laser. So how this works is the light enters here, bounces off the mirror in the back, comes, hits this bit and reflects into your eye. But with the laser, it's going to be doing the opposite. And it has a smaller four inch telescope to help with the aiming. Up top, the whole thing is powered by two LiPo batteries and a whole bunch of voltage converters. We've got the power supply for the laser driver, 12 volts for the water cooling system right here, and then two stepper motors to control the focus knobs on both of the telescopes. The laser is tucked away down here and it comes through this little loop and is fed right into the back of the telescope. And the whole telescope itself is mounted in this nifty little contraption that allows me to fine tune the aiming adjustments to match up with the aiming camera. And then I cut and welded this big cover out of aluminum to keep everything nice and safe from the rain. I cut it out of a bunch of aluminum, sanded it down real nice, welded it up, and then gave it a couple coats of spray paint. I don't even want to talk about how long this thing took to build. It's insane. But what I am going to talk to you about is this right here. So I may be new to building giant lasers, but I'm not new to flying drones. And the new Mavic Mini is the most stable, easiest to fly drone that I've ever used. But even though it's pocket sized, it's packed with professional quality features that build upon DJI's most expensive models. Pilots can choose from several quick shots that will create the perfect shot with the push of a button. I really like the droney and the orbit shots. I really feel like it adds a whole new dimension to my videos. Mavic Mini is ideal for those that have always wanted a drone but thought drones would be too difficult to fly. DJI has simplified the flying and content capturing experience so everyone can be a pilot. The camera on the Mavic Mini can record high quality footage in 2.7K, 1080p, or 12 megapixel photographs. And the three axis gimbal stabilizes the camera and keeps the video buttery smooth, giving perfect videos for sharing on YouTube or other social media. Click the link down below in the description and use my promo code to get 5% off when you buy the DJI Mavic Mini or Mavic Mini Fly More Combo. We're about to do our first test, so let me show you how this works. Right here, this controls the power of the laser, this potentiometer. And then if I press this trigger, the laser will fire. So let's do a little test. Three, two, one. Haha! <laughs> that was instant! That was so cool! Now, this laser is also guaranteed to kill the coronavirus and actually anything else it touches. I don't have the coronavirus to prove it to you, but I do have a bottle of corona. So we're going to shoot that instead. All right, we got our first target all lined up. Time to roast the corona. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm going to turn it up. Turn this, I'm going to turn this all the way up. Whoa! Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did you see that? that the bottle broke in like one second. We're gonna have to do another one. All right, now I'll, I'll try like, I'll try shooting it up more. Yeah, I'll try to open it versus cool. breaking it. I don't know. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, so here's the Corona bottle. Three, two, one. Let's turn off the power. Oh my God, the Corona bottle just exploded. Oh, my camera's got corona -ed. Oh my, it's really on there. Look at the front. Oh no, the camera's drunk. Uh, so, okay, for the next test, we're gonna try a piece of ham. We're gonna make a laser sandwich. All right, we're on the meat. Let's give it a little test burn. All right, let's turn it up a little more. All right, so we're, we're burning the meat a little bit. Let's slowly turn. Slowly. This thing is hard to control. Ah! Yeah, I can hear the meat crackling from here. All right, let's, let me do some bread now. The bread's holding out pretty good. I'm surprised. Oh no, the bread's on fire. It smells like all sorts of weird burn wow. things. It really burns the bread. It really chars the bread good. 
That made a good toast. And it uh, definitely burns right, th right Ew, through the meat. Oh, the other side looks gross. Yeah. Look at, oh my oh. gosh, you know what? It's really interesting. It didn't actually burn the meat. It burned the wood underneath the meat. I think the meat is actually kind of transparent to infrared radiation, and that's why it didn't burn the meat. Which I guess makes sense. But not too much sense. I'm still confused. That I'm is... still not going to stick my hand here. I made it meat. All right, guys, for the next test, we're going to be shooting uh, this the queen. I'm sorry, I don't have anything against the queen, but I have a cardboard cut out of the queen, and I'm going to shoot her with the laser. All right. Yep. Off with her head. Ha ha ha. Queen's on fire. Queen's on fire. Queen's on fire. Okay, queen's really on fire. Maybe we should, uh, should we worry about the Yeah, ball? maybe we should put the queen out. Ah, Liz, Her no. head fell off. Laser one, England, zero. Sorry, Queen, nothing personal. Again, this is nothing personal against the Queen. This might look we bad. Just, right? We're just trying to put her out, man. So these little laser pointers that you can buy online have a divergence of about one millimeter. That means for every meter the beam travels, it gets one millimeter bigger. All right, so we can see the beam starts off about two millimeters wide. And this one's also about two millimeters wide, but it's definitely too bright to see. So 10 meters, the red laser is about 10 millimeters. And the green one's now about 20 millimeters. And then at 20 meters, the laser's grown to about 20 millimeters. And the green laser's grown to about 50 millimeters. So that means that the green laser's diverging faster than the red laser. So that just means the farther away you get from a laser, the weaker the beam becomes. Got it. Yay! Hey. So we could only pop 9 out of 10 balloons before the laser got too weak to pop the last one. So one way to reduce the divergence in a laser is to expand the beam. So the bigger a laser is when it comes out, the better it can focus at things far away. NASA uses a 3.5 meter telescope to bounce light off the moon. By the time the beam gets there, it's over 2 kilometers wide. If we shine this cheap laser pointer at the moon, by the time the beam got there, it would be the size of Florida. Alright, now we're going to try a lighter and see if we can blow up a lighter. Alright, Sandra, are you ready? Would you like to do the honors? Oh yeah? Yeah, click. Do the trigger. Whoa! Whoa! Yes, that worked! That was cool, it like spiraled. <laughs> nice. Look at this, look at the tiny little hole that it made in this lighter. Just a tiny little hole. That's precision. That's probably why it took off like a rocket. Here we go, lighter number two. Just on fire. I think I'm aiming a little too high. Let me do some. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, let's go put out the fire. Watch this. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty cool, but wait until nighttime. I have something really cool to show you. All right, guys, we came out here at night so I can show you what this looks like at night. Now, this camera can't record infrared, so to see the laser, we're going to have to switch to the night vision camera. As normally, you should never shine a laser into a sky, but we've checked the flight radar and there is no airplanes in 100 miles that direction, so we're totally fine. Steven, hit it. Whoa! Oh my gosh, it's like a light... It's a death ray, dude. Aim it, go up. Whoa! Dude! Shoot the moon! Shoot the moon! Oh, that's so cool! Yes! Yes, my dude. You want to come see this? Whoa! Wow, that's so cool. Whoa! Just look at that beam go! Oh my gosh, it's so bright! Aim up a little bit! Goes on forever! This thing is so cool! Let's shoot that planet! Some aliens just got a vibe check. All right, so you can see it's focused at infinity right now, but we're pulling the focus in, and you'll be able to see it actually focusing in the air and then spreading out again. All right, so now we can see that the beam is focused a lot closer, but even when it was focused away, the beam did look like it would go on forever. But that's not the case, because even the most perfect laser will suffer from diffraction. No matter how perfect your beam is focused, it's always going to diverge. Hey, Stephen, what planet do you think that is up there? Uranus. <laughs> Well, that's it for this video, everybody. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.